You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters. Well, we're going to talk about Lamar Jackson. Now, you guys know if you've been subscribed to this channel long enough that we covered the Lamar Jackson contract fiasco very, very in depth, starting with him not wanting to play against the Bengals in the playoffs last year. And words started spreading around that it wasn't an injury, but it was because he was after a new contract. And, of course, that didn't set well with a lot of people. And even John Harbaugh was dropping little notes out there, dropping little things out there. Sammy Watkins Jr. came out and said some things as well about, well, the fact that Lamar didn't want to play. Now... They go into the season, Zay Flowers, OBJ. They get Lamar Jackson some weapons. They got Todd Munkin, who, frankly, ran an offense that that I, I, I thought I was going to hate. I actually liked it more than I thought I was going to. Well, guess what? It ended in playoff disaster. Everything was set up. Everything was set up. Number one, the Chiefs were down this year. Believe it or not, that's still a down Chiefs team by their standards. They got one wide receiver, really and truly, in Rice, and then Travis Kelsey, and that's about it. Patrick Mahomes had the worst year of his career, and the Ravens still got beat, and the Chiefs are back in the Super Bowl. It, it, it turned into a disaster for Baltimore Ravens fans. Well, now you've got OBJ, a guy that is very familiar with playing with a Super Bowl winning quarterback in Matthew Stafford that seems like he may be tossing a little shade in Lamar Jackson's direction because it's pretty clear he names his favorite quarterback the best quarterback he's ever played with, and it's not Lamar Jackson. All the while, keeping in mind... Lamar Jackson is still in that that five-year, $260 million contract that had $185 million guaranteed, cannot get out of it till after 2020, well, right before 2027. But even at that, you've got a dead cap hit of $35.150 million, And I think we're looking at at least a tie for the number two worst contract in all of the NFL behind only Deshaun Watson's fully guaranteed contract, which is what he wanted. It's kind of how we got to covering it on this channel was the fact that he wanted the Deshaun Watson contract. And it looks like I believe you will never win a Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson. All right. I, I just believe that when you get to the playoffs, Defensives get better, and you have to be able to throw from the pocket. And he cannot do it. He cannot throw the ball well enough from the pocket to end up winning games in the playoffs. And I think this is going to end up getting ugly and very public before this contract is over. It's crazy. So this is what OBJ came out and said. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens came so close to the league's biggest stage this year. It's a stage that Odell Beckham Jr. is familiar with, having been there just a few short years ago with the Los Angeles Rams. Speaking of Beckham, he went on with Marlon Humphrey's podcast, Punchline, and had a lot to say about quarterbacks he's played with, including Jackson. Quote, I love Lamar, Mr. MVP, La La marvelous two-time MVP. I'll put it out there right now. Never in my life seen anything like it, Beckham said when trying to describe Jackson. Beckham also talked about his time with Baker Mayfield before pausing, giving us the genuine description of his favorite quarterback he's ever played with. Quote, Matthew Stafford. <laughs> Matthew Stafford, hell of a quarterback. Hell of a quarterback, Super Bowl winning quarterback, 357 touchdowns, 56,000 yards passing through the air. I mean, you know, I'm going to be real. Take Matthew Stafford off of the Rams, drop him on this Ravens team, and they're in the Super Bowl right now. 
right now. They are in the Super Bowl. Plain and simple. If someone were to tell you to throw a spiral and be like, oh, this is what a spiral looks like. You didn't know football. Matthew Stafford, he's been doing it. Yikes. So in a roundabout way, Odell gave Lamar Jackson a bar to live up to. Beckham remembered the deep ball that Stafford threw to him back in the 2014 Pro Bowl and then was given an opportunity to compare him to Mahomes. What if he got drafted in a situation like Mahomes? Could he have been Mahomes, Beckham was asked. Quote, 100%. We know Matthew Stafford got drafted by the Lions in the worst days of the Lions, right? That's why he finally got fed up, got with Sean McVay, and got a Super Bowl ring real fast. And yes, Matthew Stafford will make the Hall of Fame one day. There's no doubt about it. You don't throw for 56,000 yards, have over 300 touchdowns and a ring, and not get in the hall. To compare anyone to Patrick Mahomes after what we've seen with the Chiefs quarterback, doing such a short period of time is really saying something. Mahomes has several years left in the league, has a chance to go down as the greatest quarterback in NFL uh, the NFL has ever seen. I disagree, but okay. And Beckham is comparing Stafford to this guy. That's some seriously high praise. And he goes on to talk about the fact that he's got he's got a relationship with, with Lamar. He likes Lamar. But the problem is when you zeroed in on things he was talking about when he came to playing quarterback, it was about Matthew Stafford and Patrick Mahomes. And you may ask, what? Well, wait a minute, Mahomes can't be the all-time? Look, Brady's got seven rings, ten Super Bowls, and a head-to-head Super Bowl win over Mahomes. I mean, Mahomes has got to win eight, or there's not even a conversation. And even then, you've got 28-3 to comeback from Brady. So um, I, I don't know how that ever even gets remotely touched. I do think Mahomes will be in the top five, though. John Harbaugh, Lamar Jackson will work with coaching staff in developing Ravens offense. So, look... Harbaugh already seems desperate in this. He does. He already seems desperate. Yeah, He's saying right here, Lamar's a driver. He's got to be involved in the setup of the car even more. This is sort of a NASCAR reference, Harbaugh said, via Jamison Hensley of ESPN. The Ravens' offense is already built around Jackson's skills, but he is going to take a more active role in continuing to develop the offense. Quote, those are things that are on my mind, on his mind, and those are things he's going to be involved with when ta- with staff talking about. Harbaugh said, I'm excited about it. He wants to do it. He's just into it, man. Harbaugh remains excited about his MVP quarterback despite the setback in the playoffs. Lamar Jackson is a phenomenal success, Harbaugh said. He's a phenomenal success as a football player. Phenomenal success as a person, leader, family man. In my opinion, there's nobody better in this league, especially nobody better for the Ravens and for this organization, for the city. Just from a historical perspective, I'm excited about the future. Yeah, I mean, if your goal is to uh, win MVPs during the regular season, maybe you got your guy. I just ultimately don't think that between that contract which is going to be cost prohibitive and it's going to start hurting the way you can develop and 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 move that roster around okay combined with the fact that Lamar's does not throw well enough from the pocket again I brought this up the other day no actual pure dual threat quarterback has ever won the Super Bowl again We've had quarterbacks that can throw from the pocket that has scrambling skills. Rodgers, Mahomes, Russell Wilson. You know, that has happened. But far as pure Michael Vick, Cam Newton, Lamar Jackson, dual threat quarterbacks, hell, Josh Allen right now. But even Josh can throw from the pocket better than Lamar. None of them have actually won a ring. And you get into the playoffs... Passing windows condense, defenses get better, coverages get better, 
And you have to be able to throw from the pocket. It just is what it is. The league could not change the rules more and and skew it towards the offense any further. And he still couldn't get it done. And honestly, I thought they were going to beat the Chiefs. I was wrong. I was like, he's horrible. He's absolutely putrid in the playoffs. I mean, I came out of that game and I was like, I feel like a fool. I was duped, and I actually thought he could get it done. He was terrible. Wow. Tell me what you think, black and white sports supporters. This is going to be an ongoing story for years. He's got to win one. He's got to win one. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.